Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome again to our morning worship and prayer. Thank you for devoting time today to be with God and to hear Him as we worship Him through song, through the reading of His Word, and also as we pray together. But before we worship it in, in, in song, I'd like to read what the Bible says in Psalm 92, verse 1 and 2. Now, this is from the contemporary English version, so let me read it. It says, It is good to praise you, Lord, to sing praises to God Most High. It is good to tell of your love in the morning and of your loyalty at night. So it's actually good not to ask us for ourselves, why does this psalmist say it is good to praise God? Well, because God is always good. Therefore, it is always good as well for us to praise Him because He deserves our praise. And praising Him, the other benefit of this, is that it helps us to focus our eyes and our hearts to which is good for our faith and our souls. And that is to fix our eyes on God. And so as we do that every single day, it helps us. That is why he said, it is good to praise our, our, our Lord. So for the next few minutes, let us devote this time to God as we worship Him in song. Fix my eyes on you, my only hope is you. I find my rest when I lean on you. I fix my eyes on you, my only hope is you. I find my rest when I lean on you, Jesus. I on you, Jesus, you go before me when I cannot see, you lead me onward, you lead me onward, let your love light up in the darkest deep, you lead me onward. eyes on you, my strength and my refuge. I find my way when I run to you. I fix my eyes on you, my strength and my refuge. I find my way when I run to you. Jesus, I run to you. Let 
your love died up in the darkest deep. You lead me on the word. You lead me on the word. You go before me when I cannot see. You lead me on the word. You lead me on the word. Let your love light up in the dark. Lord, we thank you for, Lord, your goodness upon our lives always. We pray as we dedicate this next few minutes for you, Lord. Help us, Lord God, to align our hearts and our eyes, Lord, to who you are as we look at your word. God, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, again, uh, welcome and good morning to our uh, those of you who have been with us for quite some time now in our morning worship and prayer, once again, it is an honor for us to join you in worshiping God today. Now, almost two decades ago, one of the hit TV series then was called Prison Break. But it's one of my uh, the things that I liked doing at that time, to watch Prison Break. It is actually about a brilliant man who helped his brother escape from prison through a carefully devised plan. So complex was the plan that in order for him not to forget it, he had to covertly tattoo all the plans in his body. And if you watch that series, sobrang intense in every episode. Now the miracle that we will look at today is also about a prison break. It was also intense. But instead of a complicated plan, this one is simple, yet supernatural. Instead of a brilliant brother facilitating the, the escape, this time it was the angel of God himself who came to the rescue. And unlike that, the TV series that was fictional, this one happened in real life. So let's look at Acts chapter 12, verses 1 to 17 as our text for today. Let me read what it says. About that time, Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the days of the unleavened bread. And when he seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people. Now, this story was set when violent persecutions were happening to the church. Um, as it says there, right? James, the apostle, one of the twelve, was just beheaded. And although unnamed, some of the other disciples um, were also experienced by violent persecutions. And now Peter was next. So this wasn't Peter's imp first imprisonment as well. In fact, the last time we know this, that in Acts chapter 5, he was also imprisoned. And in that time, God did a miraculous rescue also for him. So, to prevent that escape from happening, the rulers at that time placed Peter in maximum security protocol. Dati, isa lang siguro yung guardia. Ngayon, four squads of soldiers na yung nagagard sa kanya. Now this, along with the other accounts of persecution and hardships, not only in the book of Acts, but also in the other parts of the Bible, um, we will see, or we can see, about the reality of persecution. The reality of hardships and suffering that go with our faith. And you know what? I like it that the Bible did not hide these facts um, to us. I like it that it showed to us the real picture of what faith is all about. That it did not magnify just the good things of life and promise that Christianity is like a bed of roses. I like it that the Bible did not put these hardships on fine print like some contracts, right? No, in fact, it was very specific. It was very explicit. And Jesus himself made it clear to us. In this world, he said, 
we will have trouble. And so that is part of living in the world, the broken world that we are in. And looking at stories like this and how believers face those adversities, how God moved on their behalf, and you know, when you look at all of those things, I hope that we also receive real hope. We get to have and embrace real hope that you know, we can see how God moved in them and how they face those adversities instead of just being hyped up by overly inflated promises. So these challenges that they faced um, and how they survive those challenges teach us as well how to face the challenges, the hardships that we encounter in life. Ni man siguro parang being uh, in prison, but other prisons perhaps that we go through. Financial prisons, uh, mental and emotional challenges, relational conflicts. So these are the things that we face that I believe we can learn from what how God um, responded and uh, intervened in the life of Peter in the church at that time. So, how did the church respond to this? Let me read it again. So, Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. I like that. He was in prison, there's persecution happening in the church, but the response of the church was, he, they were earnest in praying for Peter to God as a church. I like how uh, one pastor put it. No? When prison doors were locked and squads of guards impeded Peter's freedom, the church responded in earnest prayer. When we th think about earnest prayers, um, to have earnest prayers or to do earnest prayers, yung picture pala niyan, di ba, is, or another translation says it's constant prayers. The other word picture that we can use for that is someone stretching out all they can for something. It's like parang siguro yung um, you're trying to rescue somebody and you're trying to stretch as far away as, as far or as, as close to the person as possible. That's what it means to have earnest prayers. And I like it because that is a picture of what happens actually when we pray. See, in circumstances that we cannot reach, in situations that are out of our control, we pray. Because we know, yes, we cannot reach it, but we know the person who can actually reach them. We know that when we turn to God, His arm is not too short to save. What we cannot reach, God can. That is why when every other gate is shut and locked, the gate to heaven is actually wide open. And we take advantage of that, you know, uh, open gate through prayer. So question, are there areas in our lives that we feel imprisoned like Peter. Maybe, again, not literal prison, but it's maybe, uh, maybe it's an emotional, emotional limitations or emotional challenges. Maybe it's a mental challenge that we are wrestling with that's crippling us and nahihirapan tayo to move forward because of it. Maybe it's um, a relational strain that we have na feeling natin parang hindi tayo makakonect dun sa tao apart from somebody helping us bridge those gaps. Or maybe it's a spiritual lang, like a loved one who is so far away from God right now. Do we know of people like that? Do we know of people who need to be set free from those prisons of bitterness, prisons of addictions, prisons of brokenness, prisons of lust, prisons of adulterous relationships, prisons of unbiblical mindsets, prisons of pride, prisons of stubbornness, prisons of rebellion against God. I hope that we get inspired or we are inspired by that church who prayed for Peter. And so let us keep knocking on those closed doors with God through prayer. So what happened um, after they earnestly prayed? In verse 6, it says, Now when Herod was about to bring him out, on that very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood next to him, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. 
And the angel said to him, Dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and followed him. He did not know what was being done by the angel was real, but, though, but thought he was seeing a vision. Verse 10, When they had passed the first and the second guard, they came to the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them on its own accord. And they went out and they went along one street. And immediately, the angel left him. Grabe yung intense na yun, no? yung, yung, yung sequence na yun. Um, in verse 11, when Peter came to himself, he said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. When he realized this, he went on to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose name was Mark, where many were gathered together and were praying. And when he knocked at the door of the gateway, a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer. Recognizing Peter's voice, in her joy, she did not open the gate, but ran in and reported that Peter was standing at the gate. Verse 15, they said to her, you're out of your mind. But she kept insisting that it was so, and they kept saying, it is his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they opened, they saw him and were amazed. But motioning them, to, them with his hand to be silent, he described to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison, and he said, tell these things to James and to the brothers. Then he departed and went to another place. Grabe yung mga events na yun, but I want to highlight highlight the actions of the church on that chunk of the story. Well, for one, it is interesting that Peter found them still praying. And it just goes to show how tenacious this church was. This church was in praying. Hindi sila naglalet up. They were earnest talaga in praying for Peter. They kept at it and they did not give up after praying. After a few days of unanswered prayers, of not seeing Peter with them, they still kept on. And I believe that that is, I hope that that inspires you. In times that you don't see the answers yet, don't give up. In, in, in times that you don't see the answers yet to maybe perhaps that's the provision for your family or maybe the salvation of a, long, uh, of, of a, lo a loved one or maybe it's a healing that you're praying for or maybe it's reconciliation, please don't give up. Please don't give up because as we're praying, I believe that God's answers are on the way. But here's the second interesting truth that I want to uh, share with you. No? When that girl, remember Rhoda, told the, that, told the church members, the church leaders, or the, those who were praying, that Peter was already outside the door, they didn't believe her, right? And they said, you're out of your mind. Or yung iba naman, sinabi sa kanya, hindi siya yun, balamang angel lang niya yun. No? And so, although they were tenacious in prayer, you still see that their faith in their prayers and faith in God still needs some work. It could be that they didn't realize that their prayers were already answered. Yes, we give them that benefit of the doubt. Or, probably, as some Bible experts were saying, they were not expecting their prayers will be answered at all. Which points us to the truth that even though their faith was not that big, the power of prayer is actually not on us. It's not how loud you pray. It's not how long you pray. It's not how eloquent you are in prayer. You see, their faith was small, but the God who listens to our prayers, He is big. So the power of prayer is not on us who lift it, but on God who hears it. That is why even if our faith is uh, on some difficult issues and circumstances, as the Bible would put it, is as small as a mustard seed, pray pa rin tayo. Because we know the one to whom we're lifting those prayers is the one who can move mountains and he is listening. So now, why don't we do this, just that? Why don't we pray right now to our big God who does miracles for us? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness to listen to us. God, Lord, we know that when we take times like this, Lord, to Lord, um, set aside everything else and just fix our eyes on you and lift up our prayers to you, 
we know that you're listening and we know that you care and we know that you are able lord to answer our prayers and so at this moment lord thank you that you are assuring my brother thank you that you are assuring my sister right now that you are a god who knows what's happening and you're a god who cares and listens to our prayers in fact lord i believe that for some of us lord you're you're moving you're ministering lord some of us Perhaps parang kami yung church, Lord. Pro probably because of some unanswered prayers in the past, Lord. Minsan pag nagpe-pray kami, parang hindi na kami naniniwala, Lord, na kaya mo talagang gawin yung mga pinagpe-pray namin. Father, if that is some of us right now, I pray, would you please heal, Lord, heal our faith. Give us the grace to trust you. Give us the grace to believe you. Give us that grace to be expectant of an answer, an expectant of the move of our Almighty God in those situations. Would you please heal, Lord, uh, Lord, whatever it is, Lord, maybe it's a, Lord, yung mga frustrations, would you please heal those? And God, thank you that you are giving us the grace, Lord, to pray, and pray again. Father, for some of us right now, Lord, we stand in the gap, Lord. Some of us, we probably are like Peter, Lord, kami yung nasa being imprisoned, Lord, by some of the issues uh, confronting us. Maybe it's a financial issue. Maybe it's a relational strain. Or maybe it's, a, Lord, um, a struggle with a sin. Father, Lord, even now, thank you. Lord, we pray and we ask, Lord, let your freedom come upon us. Lord, thank you that you're able to send angels to set Peter free. Lord, thank you that you sent your son 2,000 years ago so that we can experience your freedom in these and so by his stripes lord we, we we claim that by his stripes we are healed lord thank you that he came to proclaim freedom from the captives and even now we pray let your freedom come upon my brothers and sisters lord thank you that there's freedom lord god from any sin pattern thank you that there's freedom lord god from any lord uh lord emotional or mental struggles Lord god that we're handling at this time thank you that you're able to set us free for some of us, Lord God, who's believing for restoration of relationships or maybe a loved one to get saved. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Thank you that your arm is not too short to save. And so, Lord, we look at them right now through our mind's eyes. Lord, thank you. We, we picture them in our minds right now. You know each one by name. You know each one by name. And we pray, let the saving work of God come upon them. Thank you that your loving kindness will lead them to repentance. God, thank you. We receive this by faith. And give us the grace, Lord God, to be earnest in praying for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Your light shines right through the night. Now we can see you. We will follow you. Where you lead us, we run, run, run to your side. Our hearts are eager. We will follow you. Your light shines right through the night. Now we can see. Once again, um, we want to encourage you. We want to encourage you. Let us always look to God because He's the God of the impossible. He's the reason why we can expect miracles every day. Amen? And so as we go about our day today, let me read what the Bible says in Romans 15, verse 13, in the message translation. It says here, 
May the God of green hope fill you up with joy, fill you up with peace, so that your believing lives, filled with the life-giving energy of the Holy Spirit, will brim over with hope. We receive that in Jesus' name. Amen.